Peaches with Livingston and Ted Jellet too. And our host, Fitz and Lando, and he brings it to you. <laughs> Creature Features and all creatures. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your humble host, Vincent. The dapper chap in the tux is my stellar valet, Mr. Livingston, and the lovely lass, yeesh. Livingston, what, pray tell, in the bloody hell is this monstrosity? Miss Tangella did not have the palate for what Maurice prepared for supper tonight. She's in the kitchen preparing her own meal. Well, that's all splendid, but, but what does it have to do with this abomination? Andrew asked if he could fill in. The producers agreed. God shave the Queen. All right then, moving on. Tonight we shall present a brilliant film from 1941 entitled Invisible Ghost. It stars Bella Lugosi, Polly Ann Young, and revolves around a depressed physician who mysteriously finds himself at the center point of murders and other grisly mayhem that occurs in the village. My goodness, what? No, madam, I will not be giving Andrew a pay increase, and if your intent is to impersonate Tangella, may I suggest you do shut up and close your bloody yap? Onward. And who better to join us for a ghost movie than an actual ghost hunter? For with us tonight will be the sensational Ellen McFarlane, renowned ghost hunter who has appeared on film and television to tell her chilling tales, and who also operates ghost tours in the California wine country. Ellen claims to have psychic abilities, and she's not very tall, so one might say that she's a small medium at large. In any case, Ellen will tell us her most blood-curdling ghost stories, opine about tonight's film, tell us what ghastly and ghostly event she has in store for this year, and perhaps even quite possibly perform a reading here in our very own and very haunted Polter Mansion. So don't go away, because it's going to be another night of ghostly Legosi fright, right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. What night is it? It is Creature Features Night, but no, it is Ellen McFarlane Night. Because we have Ellen McFarlane with us tonight, and she's a ghost hunter, correct? A ghost hunter, not a ghost buster. Well, no, busting, you would have to have like a badge, right? You'd you need a to proton be like pack. Police, and you'd have to have the equipment. And, and Dan, the, Dan Aykroyd. And the automobile. Yeah, with the definitely. Things. Definitely. And the, the logo. Yeah, Copyright. and a trap. Copyright 20th Century Fox or something like that. Exactly. Right? Who knows? All right. Well, she's a ghost hunter. She's got all kinds of ghostly tales. We've had her on once before with your partner in crime, but he couldn't make it tonight. So we're just doing Ellen, and she's got enough stories to fill up an entire episode, right? And then some. Yeah, definitely. That's right. And we're going to be watching Invisible Ghosts, 1941, Bella Lugosi. Have you seen it? I believe I have, but I am a big Bella Lugosi fan. Everyone's a Bella Lugosi fan. You know, I want to meet somebody who is not a Bella Lugosi fan. You know, I bet maybe he, one of his ex-wives. I bet if he was alive today, he would not have as many fans. Why? It's like me. I don't have many fans, but I know once I'm dead, I'll have many. 
People like you better when you're gone. It's strange, isn't it? Uh, maybe so. I don't know. I think, uh, I think that you have a lot of fans now. No, the only fans I have are Celine fans throughout the manor. <laughs> All right, so we're going to watch the film. We're going to hear some ghost stories. And uh, I don't know, Tangela's probably going to do something silly. So you stay with us. You go stay with us. And we'll be back after the first run of the movie. Stay with us. Sorry, Mr. Kessler. Thank you. Good evening, my dear. You're more beautiful than ever this evening. Mrs. Kessler first, Evans. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Dad taking it? All right, Mrs. Virginia. They're having dinner. I'll answer it. Hello, Virginia. I told you not to come here this evening, Ralph. Why? Didn't you want to see me? Well, it, it isn't that I didn't want to see you. You're certainly acting strange, darling. What's all the mystery about? Let's go into the library. You see, Ralph, Ralph! After dinner, we are taking a long walk. I'd like to speak to you, Ralph. What's come over your father, Virginia? Is that why you didn't want me here tonight? Yes. It stopped me cold. I'm sorry if I accidentally stumbled on something you didn't want me to know. Well, it must seem weird to someone who's never seen it before. It happens once a year. You always appeared perfectly rational to me. Well, there's something I must tell you. It's about my mother. I don't understand. Well, it happened several years ago. My father and mother were apparently as happy as two people could be. He worshipped her. Another man? The usual best friend. It almost broke my father's heart. He seems reconciled, but he never forgets their wedding anniversary and celebrates it that way. Guess he isn't the only one who resorts to make-believe, but, but it does give one an uncanny feeling. Well, it doesn't frighten me anymore. Now that you know... I love you.
You wanted your coat, Miss Kessler. Oh, oh yes, thank you. I was going to take a drive. It's such a beautiful night. Come along? Yes, of course. Sure you don't mind going? No, no, I'd love it. We'll be back in an hour, Cecile. Yes, miss. Young man of Miss Virginia's. I guess so. If it wasn't, Miss Virginia wouldn't bother with him. Does she plan to marry him? I never discuss things that aren't my business. If you want to stay here, I suggest you don't be so curious. Well, just the same. I think this is a crazy house. And what about those murders? Julius here says there's been a lot of them. And nobody's ever been able to find out who did the killings. You talk too much, Jules. But I only said that. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Seal. Come, I'll show you where we keep our linens. Kessler. Oh, Mrs. Kessler, I brought you your dinner. Oh, please, Mrs. Kessler, I gotta go home. Oh, I wanna go home, too. Oh, but you are home. And as soon as you feel better, I'm going to take you to your husband and daughter. But they never write to me. Oh, but they don't know where you are, Mrs. Kessler. Nobody knows that but me. You see, I found I'm you. running away. We're running away in a car. We're going faster, faster, faster. We're gonna crash, we're gonna crash. I can't go home now. Can I? Mrs. Kessler, please. Please eat your dinner. I've got to go home. I'll be back in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Kessler. Good night. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. We are back, you are back, and Ellen McFarlane, Ghost Hunter, is back with us too. We're going to talk about ghosts, but first, this film. So he's doing this whole dinner thing at the table, speaking to his non-existent wife. Do you suppose she's the invisible ghost? I would hope so. Well, in, in your experience, are most ghosts invisible or not invisible? Not always, no. Um, sometimes they will appear as like a mist or a flash of light, or an orb, or, you know, sometimes they'll show as like a partial uh, figure of a person. Um, and interestingly enough, it takes a lot of energy to actually manifest as a ghost. If you're dead. If you're dead, yes. Well, I imagine it takes a lot of energy to do anything if you're dead. It right? really does. Right. 
No. So, all right. So you've been like ghost hunting for like how long now? About 25 years. 25 years? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I started and you very... you still like it? I started young, but I, I was about five or six years old when I knew that I had a, an ability to see spirits. So I actually started very young. And then when I was about 10 years old, I really started to get into it. And then 11 Ghostbusters came out. And that was like my entire world. So you were further world. inspired. Yes. Right, yes. right. Yes. So you've done television. Yes, I have done several TV shows. Which ones? Um, Ghost Adventures back in 2015 with my partner Devin. Right. It was uh, the Chinese town of Locke out on the Sacramento Delta, which was is very haunted actually, um, and is still very haunted. Today it's an artist community, but you can go out there. Right. Um, we did Monsters and Mysteries in America, which we did on the Napa Rebobs, which is an urban legend. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Yes. Right. Um, we did a movie called Haunted Wine Country, which was pretty amazing, right, which right. was more film, but uh, we've done countless internet shows. Uh, we were, our favorite was your show. Oh, of course it was. We talk about that every tour. Well, no, we don't, we don't call you out. It's like anything you say goes. Right? <laughs> I mean, we're not going to like question, like say, well, what kind of meter did you use to detect this ghost? We're just going to be like, oh, really? That's what we say. <laughs> Well, that's absolutely amazing. So you're still doing this as a tour operator. We are. We are. We actually launched a new tour last week called the Harlots, Hustlers, and Hysteria Ghosts of Napa City's Red Light District. Three H's. Yes. In Napa. Yes. And people can go on this beginning when? It's actually started and it's year round. Um, they just need to go to Napa Ghosts and, and check the calendar. So NapaGhosts.com. All right, we're going to give you the info early tonight so you can look it up. But, uh, you know, I've been on one of these tours. They're fun. You're, you're outside and there's a big group of people and uh, you get to hear ghost stories and maybe see a ghost, yes. right? We've it's actually had before. a lot. We've had a lot right? lately. All right. Well, we're going to talk about some more ghosts soon, but first we've got to get back to the invisible ghost because uh, it hopefully gets better, right? Yeah. All right. Off we go. Invisible ghost. You guys stay with us. Late again, Jules. I'm sorry, Mama, but I just couldn't get away from her. Jules, why don't you tell Mr. Kessler about his wife, that you're hiding her? Oh, I haven't got the heart, Mama. It would kill him if he saw her the way she is. Poor thing. She'd be better off if she died with that man when that car was wrecked. Uh, I guess so. Jules, I've been thinking. Maybe she had something to do with all these horrible murders. Oh, she wouldn't hurt nobody. She's like a child. She's still dazed from the accident, you know, amnesia. But she'll be better soon, then I'll take her home. But if they found out I'd been hiding her, they might think I had something to do. Jules, you must tell Mr. Kessler. Oh, no, no, Mama. We must never tell anyone. Never. Sure you won't come in? No, thanks, darling. I think I'd better run along. <laughs> Good night, Ralph. Oh, Virginia. Shall I put your car away? No, thanks. Evans will take care of it. All right. Good night. Good evening, Miss Virginia. Will you please put my car in the garage when you have a moment? Yes, miss. Hello, Casanova. Have you gone crazy? Yep. The only chance I had to see you. You ignored my letters and my telephone calls. Did you think that you could get rid of me as easy as all that? Be quiet. They'll hear you. You bet they will. And you're going to listen to me, too. I'm not giving up to that Kessler girl or anybody else. But this is different, Cecile. I never said I loved you. Are you in love with her? Yes. Well, you're not marrying her, understand? Nothing's going to stand in the way of my happiness. Not even you. Don't threaten me. Mm. 
She'll have to know about us sooner or later. And besides, I'll make you a good wife, Ralph. I promise I will. Guess what? What? I'm in love. Ralph? Yes, sir. He's a fine boy. I am so happy for you, my dear. Oh, he hasn't asked me to marry him yet, but he will. I know he will. <laughs> good night, my pet. Good night, sweet. Good night, Evans. Uh, good night, Miss Virginia. Uh, can I do anything for you, sir, before I retire? What happened to your hand, Evans? Oh, nothing, sir. I heard it when I was putting Miss Virginia's car in the garage. Did anything on it? Oh, the bandage. Oh, you mean cat an infection. How's that? Just like new, sir. I guess I'll eat for a while. Good night, Evans. Good night, sir. Oh, yes, Evans, sir. Thank you for the dinner. Yes, sir. I'm to come home. You'd kill me. You'd kill anybody.
This is Livingston and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com the official merchandiser of Creature Feature Accessories. Welcome back to the show. Miss Ellen stepped away for a moment. I think she's off to get a book. I believe you're correct. And I think it will be a ghost book. Or maybe ghost pictures. We don't know. It's always a surprise. But we're going to do letters because you guys sent it to us. And if we don't read your letters, that would be rude, correct? Indeed. All right. How about a letter? And how are you, Mr. Livingston? I'm quite well, thank you. Well, that's very nice. And you, Miss Tangela? All right. I understand you cooked your own meal this evening. And then you, you bang Paul Andrew over the head with a pan. Oh, I didn't even know she was doing that back there. Okay. That was exhausting, I, I'll bet. I have, I have to listen better. All right, our first letter is from Mark Crusoe in Vacaville, California. And he writes, Vincent, you and your staff have lived up to Bob's original show. You are doing great. Look at that, your staff. Both of you. If they, they would be if I paid them both. I only pay one. All right, movie idea. The Chamber of Horrors. It scared the hell out of me in the 60s. Have a great new year. Hugs to Tangela. High five to Livingston. That's from Mark. Thank you. Oh, he, he gave me the Klingon thing. All right. And uh, no, the Vulcan. Vulcan. Vulcan thing. Right. All right. Well, thanks for writing, Mark. We'll see what we can do about that film. Next up is a letter from... Milpitas. Milpitas? We know this place. Albert Rivas, I believe. Dear Creature Features, when I lived in North San Jose and East Milpitas, I always received your Saturday night horror show. Now that I've moved across the railroad tracks, I traveled to the Embassy Suites Hotel in East Milpitas to receive your signal, so we could signal boost it down here. Your show is great, but too quiet. You could try having some thunder and lightning outside that big window you have in the background. That will scare things up. You know, sometimes it happens back there. You just can't hear it because we have double pane glass. It keeps the PG&E bill down. Keep up the good work. From the city of the Milpitas Monster, Albert Rivas. Well, thanks for writing. You know, I don't get this whole thing about how he has to go to the hotel to... I get found it quite signal. confusing as well. I know. Mystery solved. Not yet. All right, last one. Last one. All right. This one is from Rich Schmale in Stevensville, Montana. Sounds like a lovely town. Hmm. It's actually to you. Dear Mr. Livingston, you are obviously the smarter of the three on your show. Perhaps. What do you think about that? You're not starting out on a good note, Richard. All right. Uh, I have a math problem that has perplexed me for quite some time, and I hope you can help. If I cut a cake into three even slices, each piece will be 0 0.3333 of the original size, correct? Correct. But if I solve for three times 0 0.3333, the result is 0 0.9999, correct? Correct. What happened to the remaining 0 0.0001 of cake? I believe, sir, you will find the remainder on the knife. Makes sense to me. All right. Well, thanks for writing, Rich, and I hope that puts your mind at ease. That's it? That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us a note in email, send it to the address you see over here. If you'd like to send it in regular post, use the address here. And uh, we're going to get right back with Ellen McFarlane and the Invisible Ghost in just a moment. Stay with us. Exercise number one. Ready to Arms at the side. 
At the count of one, close hand. Cecile! The fist is on the chest. At the count of two, close arm stretch to the head. At the count of three, lower arm sideways. If it's exercise you want, there's plenty of it in the kitchen. At the count of four, lower the arm position. Cecile! Stand straight. Arms at side. Ready. Begin. One, up, up, up. the new maid. I think she's dead. Dead? How did it happen? I don't know, sir. I thought she was taking her exercises. Call the police. I'll see what I can do. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Kessler, we're up to our ears in another one. The girl was killed the same way as the chauffeur six months ago. The only thing we could find was this note left by some fellow who wanted to give her the air. It's terrible, Lieutenant. She was so young. If we could find out who killed Cecile, we have the one who committed all the other murders. That's easier said than done. There's never been fingerprints, to say nothing of motives. What gets me, Mr. Kessler, is why you refuse to move out of this place. Sentimental reasons. There's nothing very sentimental about a house where anything could happen and usually does. My mother lived here, Lieutenant. Oh, I see. You're the gardener? Yes, but, but I wasn't here. I went home early. You see, I live with my wife. All right, all right, all right. Yes, sir. And please don't try to see me. Signed, Ralph. Ralph? Do you know him? Oh, I'm certain I don't. <laughs> with the name started me, I'm, I'm practically engaged to a Ralph. Did you notice anything unusual last night, Evans? Well, maybe I've been not say. Let's have it, Evans. When I was putting the roaster in the garage, I saw Cecile talk to Mr. Dixon. That's Miss Virginia's wrath. Go on. I didn't mean to listen, but they were talking loud. Then I heard him say that he never loved her. And she said she wasn't going to let him marry anyone else. And that made him real mad. He said nothing was going to stand between him and his happiness. Not even her. I knew Cecile a couple of years. She offered me the companionship I needed. Then I met you and fell in love for the first time. I love you too, Ralph. Surely you can account for your activities from the time you left our house until the next morning. No, Mr. Kessler. I had a lot to think about. I took a long ride into the country, didn't stop anywhere, and didn't see a soul I knew. Hmm. It's most unfortunate. All I know is that I... I didn't kill her. There isn't any doubt about that in our minds. Don't worry, son. We do everything we possibly can. Order. Order in the courtroom. You saw Miss Ward tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I managed the apartments where Ralph Dixon lived. Miss Mannix came there often. As a matter of fact, I thought they were married. I went home early and helped my wife with the house cleaning. The coroner's testimony should convince you that the defendant had sufficient reason for wanting to be rid of the victim. It's the truth. The city would let nothing stand in the way of his happiness. Not even her. They can. Tomorrow we're going to see the governor. When I'm sure something can be done. But governor, the man is innocent. If you would only grant a stay of execution. If you knew him, you'd realize he couldn't possibly be a murderer. I'm sorry. I've gone over the facts in the case. And unless you can present some new evidence, 
There's nothing I can do. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes? I see. It's all over. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com your hair? Mm, a woman in Napa does. I think I should go to a woman in Napa. For I, 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 I mean, you, you know, too. Colleen does a lovely job, but you know, by the time we get to the middle of the show, I start looking like the Nikki shaggy Six. dog. Like Nikki Six. Nikki Seven. <laughs> I'm a 7. bit bigger 2. than Nikki Six. All right, so uh, we're watching this film, Invisible Ghost, blah, blah, blah. She's not invisible. She's in the dungeon. Really? What's up with that? All I, wives are in the dungeon. It's marriage. Well, you know, this film confuses me, and I think this is why Bela Lugosi did it. He likes doing films that confuse me, personally. I could be wrong. Who knows? Anyways, we're here to talk about ghosts, not this movie, right? Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah, you've definitely. seen a lot of stuff, and I'm thinking, I want to know, what is the most grisly, ghastly ghost story you've ever experienced, personally, yourself? Um, my personal experience would be, I've had a couple, I've had twice where I've been actually thrown out of my body as a medium. Thrown out of your yes, body. and taken over by a spirit. Um, fortunately... So, can I just say that you sound a bit like a crazy person right that's now? That's fine. All right. <laughs> this, but, so, this is a normal thing that happens to ghost hunters, they get um, Sometimes, yeah, if they have mediumistic abilities, sometimes that will happen, yeah. Did you say mediumistic? Yes. I like that. Yes. That's a nice word. All right, continue. So uh, we were throwing an event, uh, Devin and myself, Napa Ghosts and Legends, we're throwing an event at the Ride Hotel, which is down in the Delta, um, right outside the town of Isleton, out mm -hmm. in that area. It's an old 1920s hotel. And it was a speakeasy as well during the 20s and a brothel. And we were conducting a seance for about 75 people during our event. And I had... Uh, was I was waiting on Devin to bring the room down to kind of like talk them down and calm them and during that time while he was speaking my head went forward under the table and dropped and apparently a man took over my body I now I could see it see myself but I couldn't experience what I was doing and when Devin finally noticed what was happening I turned my head to look at him and he saw a man with a full beard on my face superimposed on my face he then proceeded to curse and shake me and try to get me to come back, and I stepped back into my and body. And there's no possibility you both perhaps had some bad shellfish that night? No, no shellfish and no alcohol, for mm -hmm. sure. 
So what was the purpose of all this? He was just possessed for a moment so he could frighten people? I think so. I think he actually wanted to live again. And that particular night, an unusual storm had rolled in on the Delta. There was thunder and lightning, and um, the hotel was very old and not very well taken care of. So water was rolling down the insides of the walls and flooding. And mm -hmm. um, actually, the ceiling in one of the rooms on the third floor collapsed. So you were possessed in a ghostly hotel saloon place. Yeah, I, I think that would be the last time I would pursue that particular hobby. It's very scary. That's it really was. Insane. You know, we should be showing The Exorcist tonight. Yeah. That would have been a more appropriate film for this particular Maybe guest. so, maybe, Exorcist. right? So did your head spin? I, not that I know no. of. That could be possible, though. That, you know, that would not be good. No, considering I would be dead so after I, that, right? I think you got off easy. I do too. All right. Well, we're not going to get off easy with this film. We've got to get back to it. But uh, when we come back, we're going to hear another ghost story from Miss Ellen McFarlane. So you guys stay with us. My name is Dixon. Yes, of course. I'd like to see Mr. Kessler. He's in there. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, Ralph. Come. <clears throat> Apparently, my brother never told you about me. Come in. I've been in South America. I flew here at once. However, I'm afraid it's too late to do any good. So you're Ralph's brother. Oh, you about you, but I, I never expected such a striking resemblance. Sorry to have startled you. And this is my daughter, Virginia. How do you do? Won't you join us? I've had my dinner, thanks, but uh, I would like to talk to you. Do I look pale? No. Huh? I feel pale. The boys are Evans. What's the matter, you deep? Did he have a good attorney? Oh, one of the very best. He's handled all of Dad's legal affairs for years. Evans, Mr. Dixon, will you have coffee with us? Oh, I'm Ralph Dixon's brother. Well, you sure had me going for a minute. But you do look like poor Mr. Ralph. Uh, coffee. Yes, sir. I realize how incriminating circumstantial evidence can be, but it's never brought home to me like this before. We did everything we possibly could. You know that Ralph and my daughter were quite serious about each other. Yes, he told me in his last letter. Sit down. How long do you plan to stay in this country? Haven't decided yet, Mr. Kessler, but I would like to find out who killed that girl. Mm. It's something I would like to know, too. Please consider this your home while you're here. If there's anything I can do, don't hesitate. Oh, thank you. I see that your room is put in order. Are you sure I'm not troubling you? No, no, not at all. I'm not paying for it till I come back. I sent for your luggage in the morning. So awfully nice of you, Mr. Kessler. Really, I it's hope It's a that pleasure to have you. Thank you, sir. Well, I guess I'll turn in. I haven't had much sleep the last couple of nights. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. 
Hello, operator. Give me the police department. No. The body has not been touched. Yes. All right. Good morning, Edna. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. What's the matter? The gardener, sir. Well, he's been murdered. Murdered? Hi, Vincent. This is David Danoff. I live in Santa Rosa, California. You three are great. I love your show. I watch it every Saturday. And Tangelica, she's great. I like her very much. Uh, anyway, I am, I'm going to keep watching you all three every Saturdays. Already, take care. Bye. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to the show. We are watching The Invisible Ghost with Bella Lugosi, and we are talking about ghosts with Miss Ellen McFarlane, who is a ghost hunter extraordinaire. You're mm. like, you could teach a class on this. Right? I have taught a class I on this. I have taught a class, see? So we're going to call her Professor Ellen for the rest of the night. Maybe. Well, thank you, Vincent. I appreciate Professor that. Professor Ellen. You know, so we have a ghost problem here. Really? We'll, we'll discuss it while the film's running, but uh, it's this one. Oh, the, the lady or the armor? Well, I've never seen the armor do anything, but the lady, she, she comes up at night and plays the piano. Oh. Sometimes she oh. can't sleep. She's banging on the damn piano. And, <laughs> Any no, particular she, tune? You know, something in D minor. Oh, okay. I, I can't quite place it, but uh, anyways, we've learned to live with her. She's learned to live with us. You know, everybody else who lived in this house before was scared away, except us. And I think it's because of Tangella. Tangella scares ghosts. She All right, so you were telling me, though, during the film that you go to lots of wineries because you're in the wine country. Yes. And wineries are old and moldy and they have ghosts. They definitely do. And um, in Sonoma, Buena Vista Winery is the oldest winery in California. California. In California, yes. Right here in, in Sonoma. In Sonoma, right. yes. And it was um, settled by Count Augustin Arzathi, uh, a Hungarian count um, who is said to still haunt the property. Right. Um, and it's actually, it, we've caught many things there. Um, before they redid their cellar, cellar house, our team went in and observed um, knocking, banging, walking on a floor that didn't exist above, a, above so us. So you're all being quiet and you just mm -hmm. hear these noises and mm -hmm. the place is empty. Yes, yes, and it was fully like somebody well, was walking. How do you know it's not mice, rats? Because it's footsteps skunks. and knocking and we went around the building. We do our due diligence. We go all around. We find all of the things out there that could uh, be a natural explanation first because the first thing you want to be when you're a ghost hunter is skeptical. Right. Skeptical believer is what we call ourselves. An open-minded skeptic. Open-minded right. as well. That makes sense. Yes. So you, you do your due diligence first before right. and then, then you go through. Um, we did catch an anomaly of a, of a, like a white mist coming down a stairway that's no longer there. Um, a white mist coming down the stairway. Yes. Uh -huh. But the stairway is no longer there. No, it's, they've taken it out during the remodel. However, mm. the maiden form in the, uh, in the main area of the cellar house is, always sets the meters off, and it's made out of wood. Maiden form, what is this? It's like a, like a, it looks like a ship, like the front of the right. uh, maiden like the head stern. or whatever they call it, or a bus. Is it stern on the front? I know. It stern's the back, the bow. It's like the bow. Right. Right. It's the form. It looks like a, a religious statue that's holding a, a cross. Oh, so it's like the figurehead at the yeah, end. Figurehead. That's oh, what right, I was getting right. at. Yes. Um, she lights up the all of the meters, and she's made out of wood. There's no way that, that she should have any kind of... And these meters that you use, they're like electronic yes. detecting things. Yes. We use a lot of different things, but um, on our tours and, and just in our pockets that we carry around, we use a K2 meter. 
which is uh, actually used for electricity to detect electrical wires. Right, right. So well, that's interesting. So you're, you're finding electricity in the air where, where it should not be. Right. It's and she sets it off when there's no wires even there. So the range on these K2 meters is only about this far. So oh, wow. you can always kind of tell, you know, if there's nothing there and it's setting the meter off. So you are like the Ghostbusters. You've got tools. Oh, yes. Lots of tools. They can be quite expensive. However, your most important tool is your body. That's the most important tool that you can use. Because? Your body can sense temperature change. Your skin um, stands up. Right. It's a flight or fight response when you become encounter with something paranormal. But, you know, I imagine you go into a spooky place and the hair's naturally going to rise on the back of your neck and things like that just because you're frightened of the place. But you're hyper aware, right? Oh. You're hyper aware. Well, not everyone's psychic like you. Yeah, well, I would. You know, my grandmother was psychic. <laughs> was she? Oh, God. She caught me at everything. Really? Right. You know, I come over, she goes, oh, so uh, I noticed you stole some candies from the store, and I'm here, you, you're not <laughs> even in the same town. <laughs> Anyways, we can get back to the film. I want to hear some more ghost stories when we come back, but first we need to get back to another ghost story called The Invisible Ghost. So you guys keep watching. It's a fun one, right? They're all saying no. <laughs> See you soon. Strangled. Well, here we go again. How long do you work for you? Oh, about three years, I guess. Ever say anything to you about having any enemies? No, sir. Were you home last night? Yes, Lieutenant. To your knowledge, did anybody come in or go out of the house during the course of the evening? We have a house guest. Why isn't he here? I'll get him. Oh, don't trouble yourself, Mr. Kastner. Where is he? He's upstairs in his bedroom. Let's have a look at him, Ryan. Good morning. You want it in the kitchen. In the kitchen? Yeah. Am I seeing things? He's Ralph's brother. Well, he's the image of him. How did this happen? That's what we'd like to find out. He was strangled, Paul. Would you mind if we go into the library? No, that's all right. Wait here for the coroner, Ryan. Not you, Evans. Hey, where were you on the night of January the 13th? Have you had your coffee yet? No. Well, I guess that's that. No clues, no fingerprints, no motive, nothing. But surely if a man was choked to death, there would be imprints on his throat. Hmm. There weren't any on the Mannix, girl. And they were killed the same way, is that right? That doesn't prove a thing, Dixon. All the others got it, and always the same way. The corner's here. Okay. We'll be right back. What does he mean by the others? Just that. Others have been killed here. Why in the world do you stay in this place? We can't leave. these other murders. I'll put your luggage in your room, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Yeah? Uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, it'll be a change anyhow. What's bothering you? As a rule, I'm not a very curious person, but well, um, I was beginning to get you, huh? In a way, yes. What about these other murders? Well, there's been quite a lot of them, Dixon. Some of the best brains in the department have tried to solve them. But we always run up against a stone wall. Were the other murders brought out in my brother's trial? That was different. That was a cut and dried case. Why haven't the police closed the house? Oh, we tried to, but Mr. Kessler took it to court. Carries a lot of weight around here. Does a lot of good, too. You think he'd want to leave? Uh, I guess he's waiting for his wife to come back. She left him several years ago. An awful scandal at the time. One page stuff and all that. Poor devil. He didn't have a chance. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll be running along. Glad I met you, Dixon. Good day, Lieutenant. 
Well, this isn't a very pleasant way to entertain a guest. You know, Mr. Kessler, I have a feeling that somehow or other these mysterious murders are going to be cleared up, and quickly, too. Nothing would please me more. Are your wife? Yes. She's beautiful. I rarely talk about her, but I think about her constantly. She has eyes like Virginia. Her hair, her skin. They were the loveliest I've ever seen. I hope you have the pleasure of meeting her. She'll be back someday. Hello there. Marvel admiring your mother's picture. Father's a sentimentalist. He has every right to be. I'll get it. Hello? Yes? Just a moment, please. It's for you, Dad. Thank you. Yes? Yes, I guess I can. Yes. Oh, in about 20 minutes, I'd say. Surely. Goodbye. I'll see you children later. Business. Sorry. That's the only information I can give you, Mr. Kirby. Have you notified his wife? Yes, Mr. Kessler. Poor thing, she took it quite hard. Sad him. Oh. I want to see the coroner. Yes? And Jules' wife. Where are they taking? In there, Mrs. Mason. One moment alone with him. I won't ever see him again. Well, uh, yes, I guess so. Thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Mason, Mrs. Mason. You'd better take her out, Mr. Kirby. He's alive. He's alive. I saw him move. I'll get the hospital. You'll be all right, Mrs. Mason. Steady now. Get him out of here. He's not dead. The doctor will be here any minute. Jules. Please, Mrs. Mason. Jules, listen to me. Did you recognize the man who tried to kill you? It was ghastly. I don't believe I was ever more startled in my life than when Mrs. Mason screamed. It must have been a terrific shock to see him come back to life. Yes, it was. Just a few moments longer, and I would have known who the assailant was. I don't like to bring up the subject, Mr. Kessler, but these murders, did they ever happen in the daytime? No, I don't believe so. I see. You evidently have some reason for asking. Uh, not particularly. I was just curious about that one point. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry dinner is late tonight, sir. But the new cook is having quite a time getting started. That's all right. Evans been with you long? Over seven years. Everything's gone wrong today. Now I burned the roast. Oh, don't get so flustered. You'll be all right. I was so anxious to make good, I want to say. Oh, is that mixing spoon? Yeah, it is. Right in front of me. Thanks. I like it here. It's nice. Everything's so quiet and peaceful, like. Ever read the newspapers? No, they're just full of trash and murders and stuff. Mm -hmm. What you don't know, well, it's all right. Here, here's your pepper salt. Thanks. 
That's all I'm afraid you have me cornered. You still have a couple of moves, Mr. Kessler. <laughs> You've met your equal, Dad. Oh, your father just got himself into a bad position. Hmm. You don't play the song. It's your game, Paul. Want to play another? No, oh, thank you. Not tonight. It's getting late. Pardon me, sir. Yes? But may I speak to you a moment, please? Oh, yes, certainly. Uh, the cook wants to leave. I thought you should know. Why? She just came. She feels if her work is unsatisfactory. She had so much trouble with dinner tonight. Why, that's ridiculous. Oh, I understand. It's her first day. I speak to her. I'll say good night, Mr. Kesslin. Think I'll turn in. Thanks for the game. Good night, Paul. Good night, Dad. Good night, Charlie. I'll walk up with you, Paul. Oh, glad to have your company. It's a long, lonesome climb up those stairs all alone. Where are you going, Marie? You can't leave us after cooking such an elegant dinner. Did you really like it, Mr. Kessler? Why, I never tasted anything to equal that roast beef. Besides, you can't go now. It's going to rain in a minute. Are you sure you want me to stay? Oh, certainly, Marie. Oh, well, I like it here, but I thought... Oh, then it is settled. Oh, wait till you taste my apple pie, Mr. Kessler. Apple pie? Mm -hmm. My, that will be a treat. <laughs> oh, let me take this. You, you might as well unpack your things, yes, Marie. Yes, sure. Thank you, sir. Not at all, Marie. Good night. Good night, Mr. Kessler. Oh, he's a wonderful man. Now, let's see. What did I do wrong? Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best.
Mr. Kessler. Mr. Kessler, are you ill? What? Something wrong? Hello, Paul. I must have walked in my sleep. Well, you did better than I. I couldn't sleep at all. It's raining. Why don't you go to bed, Paul? I'm all right. Is there anything I can do? Nothing, Paul. Thank you. I think I'll read for a while. Good night. Good night, Mr. Kessler. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. That you know somebody should the Beatles should have made a song about this movie. Now that was the police, right? Spirits in a material world, right? I don't know. <laughs> we should. You're no, a rock I'm star. talking about this film and the Beatles. <laughs> all right, so murder and mayhem around town, all kinds of havoc. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like a normal day for you as a ghost hunter, right? It truly is. It really is. My whole life is a paranormal experience. If you're just coming in, we're with Ellen McFarlane, ghost hunter at large. That's small, because she's you know she's only about that tall. Ah, uh, yeah, so my, she can't my be at large. nickname is Corgi Legs. Corgi Legs. <laughs> you know the Queen loves corgis. They do. She does actually. Corgis are awesome. Amazing. All right, so you've got a story to tell about a place close by. Yes. And you have photos. I yes. She has photographic evidence. 
So a few years ago, things. I did a show and it was based on this location. It's known as Partrick Road. We're going to show a, a close-up of this, but I, I'd like to see it because I cannot see that close-up myself. All right, so the road is blue. Yes, right. and it, it's actually a great picture because it shows the contrast. It looks like a negative. This yeah. is this is special effects. Sometimes, though, no, sometimes when we do ghost hunting and we photo, those are the greatest photos because they can show masses you wouldn't see with your normal eye. But this is intentional. This yeah. is this yes. did not come out of the right. camera like this. Partrick Road is a uh, part of our urban legend in Partrick. Napa. Partrick. Partrick, not Patrick. Like Patrick with an R. And it's Partrick, and it's after the Partrick right. family who owned a candy store the downtown. Partridge, do they have a big yellow bus? That's the Partridge family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you Yanks have a way with names. I'm so Don't confused with. Don't even bring up Danny Partridge. Danny Partridge. <laughs> Donny, D Danny Bonaducci. Something. Hot mess. Hot mess, all right. Well, we're not talk here to talk about him. We're here to talk about ghosts. Right. So what's this? So this this is actually the creature from the urban legend. It's called There's the Rebob. Creature. Show me this. Yes. This, of course, is an artistic reproduction, it right? Is a this is not an actual photo. Right. This is what people have claimed they have seen. Yes. So this image we're showing you now is uh, an artist rendition. This looks like one of the flying monkeys from Wizard of Oz. Yes, it does, actually. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm starting to think that there may not be a lot of truth to this particular you tale. Know, What's it, what, tell me the legend. Well, okay, so the legend is that it's a bioengineered monkey that's half human, half machine. Machine? Yes. That right. was created right. as a super fighting uh, soldier for the Vietnam War. And these were built on Partrick Road? Yeah, by the mad scientist. And they're called what? Rebobs. Rebob. Rebob. I didn't make it up, and I personally don't I, believe in I, the Rebobs. I Rebobs, simply have no response to this. I, I, I don't know what to say. I think this is a, a legend somebody made up to keep people off their property. I do, I do believe that because the current owners don't let people on that property. Right. There so is a cemetery you, at the top of that road. If you're going to go visit Partrick Road and you see one of these, do write to us because get a photo this time. Bring your iPhone, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. Partrick Road. Partrick so Road. So why mechanical? I don't know. You know, it was Lover's Lane back in the day. Oh, well, that explains it. Yes, yes. So I think people were very, um, you know, altered. And the cemetery <laughs> at the top of this road very, is? Yeah, cemetery. But it's a community cemetery with several of our forefathers oh. being buried up there. But nothing to do with robotic red monkeys? No. Right. But there is paranormal activity in that area. I, I think there's paranormal activity in this story. I don't know. This is not my favorite story of yours. You're going to tell me a better one when we okay, come back. Okay, definitely. All right, let's get back to the film. Right? Yep. Back to the film. All right, off we go. Back to Invisible Ghost. You guys stay with us. You look like you had a good night's sleep, Mr. Kessler. I was so tired when I got to bed, I don't even remember climbing in. Dad! Who would do a thing like that? I wonder if anyone was hurt.
see nothing could have hurt my father more. It's unquestionably the work of the madman. Uh, You're right, Evans. Uh, yes, Miss Kessler. Good morning, sir. Where is the new cook? She says she'll go shopping first thing this morning. Have you looked in the room? No, sir. Something wrong, Mr. Kessler? There's a valise. She didn't leave. I'm not worried about that. When did she tell you she's going to the market? Last night before she went to bed. Do you think there's any connection between this and what has happened before? I don't know. Have you been through the rest of the house yet? No, sir. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. Oh, Marie. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. Thank you. I wonder why he was so glad to see me. Mr. Kessler thought you had been murdered. Oh, he's so sweet. I'm going to start to make that apple pie. Hurt. Murdered? <laughs> I can't imagine who would do a thing like that. I'll get it. Good morning, Miss Kessler. Won't you come in? Thank you. That happened last night. Didn't it fall? No. Find me the person who did it and you've got your murderer. Nobody came into this house last night. Ryan and his boys were stationed outside. Lieutenant. Oh, Lieutenant. You didn't hear any noises during the night? No, but there's funny things going on around here. Meaning what? Well, this happened three times now. I put food on the sink, left the room. When I come back, it was gone. No. You ought to hire a detective to watch it. <laughs> That's what you get for being such an excellent cook. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Yeah? You got something? I don't know why. I found this in the picture. Anybody else know about it? No, I wanted to speak to you first. Okay. I'll see if I can match it. Keep the others downstairs. <laughs> Why not? I agree. <laughs> Is uh, this yours, Mr. Kessler? Yes. Why? I thought I'd seen it on you. Found it in Evans' room. Well, there's nothing strange about that. There wouldn't be, Mr. Kessler, but it so happens that a thread from this robe was found embedded in the picture. Surely you're not trying to accuse Evans. Oh, it's incredible. You're just trying to make a case. Well, somebody's been doing these killings. Ryan didn't die of heart failure. Don't forget that. When did you give Evans that robe, Mr. Kessler? I don't remember giving it to him at all. But naturally, when my things need bending, he just picks them up. I don't care how he got it. He had it and he used it on that picture. I'm going to talk to him. Uh, just a minute, Lieutenant. Yeah? If Evans is the man we want, it strikes me you've got to have more evidence. <laughs> now, everybody wants to be a detective. Oh, wait a minute. Perhaps Paul has some suggestion. All right, go ahead. What is it? Without doubt, the murderer is insane. The picture tells us that. I believe we should call in a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist. You've still got the robe. But before Evans is accused, I'm definitely in favor of giving him a sanity test. What do you say, Lieutenant? Okay. Maybe I'd better take one myself. All we want to know is if the fellow's crazy. That's very easy to determine. Shall we make the examination here? If you don't mind, Doctor. Please tell Evans I want to see him and then go up to your room. Go to my room? Is it possible, Doctor, for a man to be normal, say, for two or three months at a time, then go completely insane for an hour or two? Yes, quite common. This should be most interesting. 
Now what? The fuse must have blown. I like the candles. Hairstyling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Thank you. My father wants to see you, Evan. He's in his room. Yes, miss. That'll have to do, gentlemen, until the lights are fixed. I'll be in my room, Evan. Yes, miss. Sorry, Mr. Kessler, but we ran out of fuses. And I sent Marie over the store to get some more, sir. That's all right, Evans. Sit down. Oh, pardon me, sir. Well, go ahead, Evans. Sit down. We want to talk to you. All right, sit down. Do you want to speak to me, sir? This gentleman would like to ask you a few questions, Evans. Yes, sir. Do you know these men? Yes, sir. What's this gentleman's name? Mr. Kessler. Mr. Charles Kessler, sir. Would you say that Mr. Kessler is out of his mind? Uh, I don't understand you. Would you say that he is insane? No, sir. myself. Please, Lieutenant. Oh, all right, all right. Am I crazy? I don't think so. You don't think so? I know that woman. She's wicked. She can't go home. Yes. Yes, I know. She's bad. Now you come with me. Oh, there we are. Ever see this before? Yes, sir. What were you doing with it last night? I don't know what you're talking about, sir.
we found. Miss Kessler. I'm dead, Charles. Do you hear me? I'm dead. I'm afraid to come home. You kill me. You'd kill anybody. It's Kessler. Take her out quickly. Now you sit right there, and we'll see that you get home all right. What are we done? Give me a hand, George. She's dead. What happened here? We've got the murderer. Evans. No, Mr. Kessler. You. I knew you'd come back. Nothing can part us now, my darling. And so ends Invisible Ghost. You know, I've seen this film. I now realize I have seen this film once before. I think we've even shown it on the show. And I never liked the ending. It was like, you know. Too predictable. Uh, well, yeah, he always plays the bad guy. What do you think of the film? What would you like about it? Oh, you know, she loves murder she wrote. So really? it was like a murder mystery type movies so she likes those things she likes old movies i do too I she do doesn't too. like this new stuff like this 1941 stuff we show you would she likes the, the talkies the early talkies the early talkies yeah. right so what do you do next well we launched our new tour as we discussed and we right. have our other tours napa sonoma and vacaville let's throw up your website again just in case okay it's napa um, ghosts napa ghost.com napa ghost.com mm -hmm. one more time that's where you go um, and this year we're going to be launching a mobile tour on our ghost bus. You have a ghost bus? We sure do. Are you going to call it the ghost buster? No, no. <laughs> I suppose there's copyright trademark issues. 
With the yeah, internet. Dan Aykroyd wouldn't like that. That would have been good. No, I bet he would love it. I bet it's the studio. He's studios. a really nice guy. He some, really is. Some some man in a suit that is going to gripe about Definitely. this. Definitely. Right. All right. So you're doing a bus tour, and what what, what does one do on a bus tour? Um, it well, it's going to be bus tour with whiskey tasting around oh town. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. The driver gets to uh, taste as well. No, 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 yeah. no, no. Right. We'll All be right. going to the Napa Distillery. They'll be setting us up when it's it's a very cool steampunk speakeasy vibe. How, how wonderful. Yeah, so you get to taste a flight of whiskey. You know, I think I've been by there. It's got the upstairs, a nice, luxurious Yes, yes that's where Dacre salon. was, Dacre Stoker. Uh -huh. oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. No, I've been there. It's very nice, and they make very fine whiskey. Mm -hmm. So you go, you get drunk, you get in the bus, and you go look at I ghosts. I think the drunk will be after the bus. Oh, at the end, because you know, there's nothing like an unruly passenger when you're in I the bus. But I think your success of seeing ghosts will increase exponentially. No, they they would see spirits. Oh, <laughs> all right. They would not all see right. ghosts. You know about these things better than me. Yes. Well, that sounds like lots of fun. I, I think I, I want to attend one of these. Yeah, well, we're going to be doing the serial killer thing with the bus. So we'll be visiting serial all the stops. Serial killers on the bus. Well, we're, we're visiting the stops of a serial killer and the last oh. public execution. I was yeah. afraid you were going to have serial, serial killers on the bus and normal people as well. Well, you never know who's the serial killer. Well, if you invite her. Yeah. She might be a serial killer. She's more of just a grave digger. <laughs> She's terrible. All right. Well, that's absolutely amazing. So uh, we will see you again soon. Yes. Right? Yes. You see certainly you on a ghost will. Tour. And uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And you stay out of trouble and don't get bitten by a ghost. Bitten? As far as you guys go, thanks for staying up late with us tonight. We love it when you do that. Tangella loves it when you do it. Mr. Livingston, however, frowns upon it. So get to <laughs> bed early, all right? We'll see you next week. Different movie, different guest. Should be lots of fun, too. See you then. So, uh, Ellen, mm -hmm. a bus. Yes. I've driven every type of vehicle in the world except for a bus. I'd like to try driving your bus. Do you think you might let me one time? Well, ours is a long bus. I think you should be driving the short bus. <laughs>